Hey, I'm Prof. Omar. Welcome to today's video where we're going to compute the limit as n approaches infinity of n factorial over n to the n all raised to the 1 over n. Now, it's an interesting limit. It's not clear what's going on with it. Um, and if you have some familiarity with something like Stirling's formula, there's a way to approximate n factorial that compares it to n to the n. But we're going to use standard techniques to try to approach this thing. So the first thing I'm going to do is define this to be x sub n, and then we're interested in the limit as n, n approaches infinity of x sub n. I'm going to rewrite x sub n as the following by considering the logarithm of x sub n. So the logarithm of x sub n is 1 over n log of n factorial over n to the n. And now the thing is, we can write this inside piece as a product The product looks something like 1 over n times 2 over n times 3 over n all the way to times n over n. And since we're taking the logarithm of a product, we can write this as a sum of logarithms. So this is 1 over n times the sum of log 1 over n plus log 2 over n plus log 3 over n. all the way to log n over n. Okay, so what's going on with this sum? If we look at this, you can think about graphing the function logarithm of x that looks something like this, where we have here the point 1, 0. And what we're doing here is splitting the interval 0, 1 into n pieces. And then we're taking heights of these different sizes all based on these points. So say this point here was 1 over n and this was 2 over n. Then we have something like a rectangle of height 1 over n, and then this 1 over n is the length of this base. So we have the area of this rectangle right here. Similarly, if we draw a rectangle to the graph here, it'll have base 1 over n and height log 2 over n, etc. So we can keep doing this here until the end. So what we have here is really a Raman sum approximation of an integral, and it's the integral from 0 to 1 of this function log x. So as n approaches infinity, the logarithm of these terms is going to approximate this integral, which is the integral from 0 to 1 of log x dx. Okay, so let's take some time to figure out what this integral is in order to figure out what happens to the limit of the logarithms of the things that we're interested in. Okay, so we want to compute the integral from 0 to 1 of log x dx. Now the problem is, as x goes to 0, this thing goes to negative infinity. So we should really let this be b and take the limit as b goes to 0 but not just 0 because the function is not defined at uh, left of 0, we should go um, 0 from the right. Okay, so this is the limit as b approaches 0 from the right of the value from b to n minus 1, oh, sorry, b to 1 of the antiderivative of this, which is x log x minus x, which you can do by parts. And so we'll get something like 1 times logarithm of 1 minus 1 minus, and then we have the limit as b approaches 0 from the right, of b log b minus b. Okay, this is 0. So we get negative 1 times this limit. Let's analyze some pieces of this. So as b goes to 0, this quantity here goes to 0. 
Now the question is what happens to B log B? We'll take a little separate step over here. So B log B, as B is going to zero from the right, so B is getting is positive by getting smaller and smaller, we can think of B as being something like e to the negative t, where t is going to infinity. So this quantity here is gonna look like e to the negative t times the logarithm of that, which is negative t. And so this expression, finding out what the limit as b approaches infinity, uh, sorry, zero from the right of this thing is the same as finding out the limit as t goes to infinity of this thing. Now this thing here is negative t over e to the t, and e to the t blows up compared to t, and so this thing is going to zero, and hence this goes to zero too. Okay, so this goes to zero, meaning this whole thing goes to negative one. So the integral we're interested in here actually is negative one. Cool, so now we know what happens to the logarithm of our sequence that we're interested in finding the limit of. Now, if the logarithm is going to negative one, then we can apply the function f of t equal to e to the t, which is a continuous function. So if the limit of this sequence goes to negative one, then the limit of e raised to the sequence, e to the log xn, which is xn itself, is gonna be e to this value. And so we get one over e as our limit. Cool, so I think the moral of the story here is by taking logarithms, we'll be able to represent this uh, expression as a sum that actually approximated an integral, and then we were able to compute that integral to figure out what happens to the logarithm of our sequence, and hence what happens to our sequence.